Hello and welcome to the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr. Barton, where every week I pick you out a beautiful question to help you prepare as best as you can for the brand new Maths GCSE. Now, whenever I look at the results to this question on my Diagnostic Questions website, I find out that students aren't doing particularly well at it. And that's no surprise to me because this, in fact, is a brand new topic to GCSE. Indeed, this topic has been taken right from A-level, so it's no surprise that students are finding it tough. And I'll tell you what, to make matters worse, not only could this appear on the higher tier GCSE, it could also appear on the foundation tier. So it's one of those that we really need to get our heads around. So let's take a look at the question. It's been kindly provided by Edexcel. What is the exact value of sine 30? Now, I know what you're thinking. Fine, I'll just get my calculator out and bang that in there. But what the flipping X this? No calculator allowed. So when you see the phrase exact value, that should set an alarm bell or a light bulb off in your head to say, all right, this is one of those trigonometry questions that I just need to get my head around how to do without a calculator. Now, you've got two options. One option is you just memorize all the exact values that you need. So sine 30, sine 45, sine 60, cos 30, cos 45, tan, blah, blah, blah. My memory's useless, I can't do that. So what I'm gonna look at in this video is how you actually derive the answer to this question. And derive means that you can kind of generate it or figure it out without needing to remember all those different values. Because if you've got too much to remember, well, I find this anyway, I get them all muddled up. So I'll teach you now how to derive the answer to sine 30. <laughs> now, those of you who've watched these videos before know I can't draw, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. So what you need if you're deriving a 30 degree or one of the 60 degree uh, angles is you need an equilateral triangle. So just a little sketch of an equilateral triangle. Now let me have a look at this. Oh, hello. I've drawn worse, I'll take that, I'll take that. And what I'm actually gonna do with this equilateral triangle is I'm gonna split him exactly in half like that. And now let's fill some things out. So, what do I know about that angle there? Well, I know that angle there is a 60 degree because it's an equilateral triangle. What do I know about this angle up here? Well, the whole angle will be a 60 degree and I've chopped him in half, so he's gonna be a 30 degree. And finally, what does that tell me about this angle here? Well, it's a perpendicular line and it's 60 and 30 makes 90. So this has got to be 90 degrees as well. Okay, so I've got myself a nice right angle triangle. Now, my original equilateral triangle, I'm going to pretend, and there's a very important reason for this, that each of its lengths was equal to two. Okay. So what does that mean this particular length is equal to here? Well, it's split it in half and half of two, last time I checked, was one. So what I've got in fact is a nice little uh, right angle triangle with one side one, one side two, and I don't know what this particular side is yet. So let's, uh, to make life easier, let me just redraw this triangle with just the pieces of information that we need in there. Okay, so I've got my 90 degree here and I've got my 30 degree angle. Now the question asks, what is the exact value of sine 30 degrees? Now what's sine? Well, sine theta or sine x or however you've been taught to remember it is equal to my oh, hello, opposite divided by my hypotenuse. Okay, so what's my opposite side? Well, the side opposite to 30 degrees is this one down here. And we've just said before that that's equal to one, measures one in length. What's my hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is the side that is directly opposite the right angle. What's this particular side equal to? Well, we've said before that that's equal to two. So what's sine theta equal to? Well, sine theta is equal to opposite, which is one divided by hypotenuse, which is two. But of course we know what theta is, theta is 30 degrees. So that's gonna tell me that sine 30 is equal to one opposite divided by two hypotenuse. So it's gonna be equal to a half. And I'm done and dusted. But you know what I'm gonna say now, right? You only had half the fun if you leave it there because where the flipping act do these wrong answers come from? Where does zero come from? Why might you think sine 30 equals zero? Well, I think this comes if you don't know how to do this technique of deriving and you purely go off your sine graph and you get your sine graph wrong. So your sine graph is a beautiful sloping graph there. 
And hopefully you all know that this sine graph kind of peaks at 90 degrees and it goes through here at 180 degrees. It's really worth learning your sine graph. But if you don't know what that sine graph looks like, you might be tempted to think that that first value there is 30 degrees. But of course it's not, that's zero degrees. So sine of zero is zero, but sine of 30 as we've seen is a half. And likewise, you may not know your sine graph and you may think that it's sine 30 equals one, but it doesn't. Sine of 90 equals one. This graph peaks at 90 degrees, not 30 degrees. And finally, where the flipping heck is root three over two? What is going on with that? Why on earth would somebody think sine 30 was root three over two? Well, that's quite interesting because it all comes from this side here. If you know what this side here measures, then you'll see where this root three over two comes from. How are we gonna work out what that side measures? Well, it's the it's a non-hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. So a bit of Pythagoras will work for that. So if I do my hypotenuse squared, take off my other side squared and square root me answer, I end up with two squared, which is four, take off one. So four take one, last time I checked was three. So that's actually the square root of three. Now, where's root three over two come from? Well, that is this side divided by this side, or your adjacent divided by your hypotenuse. So that's actually cos 30 equals root three over two, flipping heck. But just before I let you go, I always like to think what's another wrong answer that students might come up with for sine 30. And the one I thought of, see what you make of this, is two. Why on earth would people think sine 30 was two? Well, imagine you've done all this brilliant work in drawing your triangle, working out that was one, working out that was two, everyone's happy. And then you only flip and go and do hypotenuse divided by opposite the wrong way around. So you do two divided by one and end up with two. You'd be flipping fuming at yourself. So just be careful of that. So look, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not a particularly easy topic, exact values of trigonometric ratios. It sounds good, like it rolls off the tongue nicely. And if you've got a super duper memory, you can remember things like sine 30 is a half, cos 30 is root three over two, tan 45 is one, all this kind of stuff. But if you can derive them like that, firstly, it's gonna practice your, your Sokotoa and your Pythagoras. And secondly, it's gonna mean in the exam, you just need to remember one thing, how to derive them, as opposed to all the separate individual things. Anyway, try the rest of the quiz out um, on diagnostic questions and hop on Mr. Barton Maths if you want any uh, videos or worksheets or anything like that for some extra practice. Okay, and I'll see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care, bye for now.